Hello and welcome to video 2 for week 8. In the previous video, we defined the determinant conceptually as a thing that measured the change in area, volume, or hypervolume, as well as the change in orientation. But we didn't tell you how to actually calculate these things. In this video, we're going to actually calculate the determinants, and we start with a 2 die 2 determinant. The mark remarkable thing about a determinant, considering how much information it, it measures, this change in size and this change in orientation, is it's all polynomial calculations in the coefficients of the matrix. So the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix, A, B, C, D, we often write a matrix with, with straight lines to indicate determinant. So I could write it as the determinant of debt as an operation, or I can write it in these straight lines. So if you see these straight lines, you can assume we're calculating a determinant, and it is the expression AD minus BC. So if I had a 2 by 2 matrix here, I take A times D, subtract B times C, and that's going to give me negative 1 minus negative 6, so negative 1 plus 6 is going to give me 5. So this matrix preserves orientation and multiplies area by 5. Those are 2 by 2 matrices. The method for calculating determinants for larger matrices is called cofactor expansion, and it is a recursive algorithm, and it's going to be based on this pattern of plus and minus signs. So I put this up here for your reference. I'm going to come back to this when we get into an example of cofactor expansion. But this pattern, checkerboard pattern, of plus and minus signs is going to be part of the algorithm. So I just wanted to have it up here briefly so that you know what it is when I'm referring to it. So the easiest way to define cofactor expansion is to show you it by example. It's a recursive algorithm that takes determinants of a matrix, a square matrix, and turns them into determinants of a matrix one smaller. So it'll take a 5x5 five five and give you 4x4 four four determinants, and then it will take a 4x4 four four and give you 3x3 three three determinants. And in the example I'm doing here, we'll take a 3x3 three three and express it in terms of 2x2 two two determinants. And since you can compete, you can keep repeating this process, the algorithm will eventually break down a matrix of any size into 2x2s, two and you can calculate those with the definition we had at the start of this video. So how does it work? Well, we take this 3x3 three, three three matrix. I can take any row or any column I want. Now I'm going to choose here the first row. But again, this could be any row or any column. I'm going to choose the first row. And then for each entry in the first row, I'm going to take the entry 5, and I'm going to cross out everything there. And I have a 2x2 two two matrix left, which I'm going to write here. And I'm going to multiply it by the entry that I had, which you can't see anymore, but that 5 that I had there. I'm going to multiply it by 5. And here's where I'm going to apply my checker board pattern of plus and minuses. So then I will put uh, a plus or a minus in front of this, depending on the checkerboard. The checkerboard started with plus in the top left, so I have a plus 5 here. Then I chose the first row, so I'm going to go to the next row. I'm going to have negative 2, so there's my negative 2. My checkerboard had a negative there, so I'm going to have it subtract negative 2. That checkerboard applies. And then I'm going to cross out the row and column that that negative 2 is in. And what I have left with is negative 3, negative 2, 1, 3. So I just squish that together into a smaller matrix there. And then I keep going. I choose this. Uh, my checkerboard was plus minus plus, so this has a plus in front of it. And then I cross off its row and its column. I get a smaller matrix left. I write that matrix here. And I'm doing this to get from a 3x3 three three to some 2x2s. Two this works in any size. If I start with a 4x4, four four, go across any row or column. For each entry, cross off the row and column that it's in. You'll get a 3x3 three three matrix by squishing the rest together. Um, apply the checkerboard plus or minus, and then add all of these things together. So in this way, what I've done is I turn this 3x3 three three matrix determinant into three 2x2s. Two and then I just calculate these 2x2s. Two two. So I get 5 times 3 times 3 minus negative 2 times negative 5, and negative negative is plus 2, and then 3 times negative 3 minus 2 times negative 1, and then 0. 
uh, 3 times negative 5 minus 3 times 1. And then I just evaluate all that arithmetic. Uh, this is going to give me a negative 1, so I'm going to get a negative 5 there. This is going to give me a negative 7. Um, negative 9 plus 2 is negative 7, so I get to get 2 times negative 7 there, and then 0 times whatever is 0. So add those together, I get negative 14, and negative 5 gives me a negative 19. So this 3 by 3 matrix uh, multiplies volumes by a factor of 19 and flips orientation in R3. And this is the algorithm. This is sort of as much detail I'm going to give you about it. It's the same no matter what size you start with. You still choose a row or a column. Nice to choose a row or a column with lots of zeros, because then you get things that multiply by zero, which make your arithmetic easier. So that's why it's nice we can choose any row or any column. Choose a row or a column, go across for each entry, cross off the row and column, write down the remaining matrix. Uh, and then a 4x4 four four will turn into 3x3s, three and on 3x3 three three, you can just use cofactor expansion again. Hence what I said about sort of recursive algorithm that calls itself on the smaller pieces, until you get down to 2x2s, two which we know how to do. One thing I will say about this before the video is over is this is con uh, computationally pretty expensive. Because if you have a 5x5, five five, it turns into five 4x4s. Four four Each of those turns into four 3x3s. Three Each of those turns into three 2x2s. Two what you're getting is a factorial expansion in the number of matrices. So to calculate a 5x5 five five matrix, you'll need five factorial calculations. To calculate a 6x6 six six matrix, you'll need six factorial calculations. And the factorials grow very, very quickly. This is not an ideal thing. In the algorithmic study of linear algebra, there are lots of clever tricks to try and take determinants more quickly than this, and they work for certain cases, but for the general case, it's good to know that calculating determinants is a pretty computationally difficult thing to do when your matrices get large.